Hello people, welcome to our final episode of Who's That Anime? With your hosts Steve and Colin. We're still going through Steins Gate, we've watched the series, went, ooh, that's a series. And then uh, watched the OAV, went, ooh, that's an OAV, or VOA. No. OVA. OVA. Letters, that's all it is. Letters. O A B. We watched the BBQ. The barbecue. Yep. <laughs> the BBQ. <laughs> to be fair, that that is a a very subtle nod to this new uh, episode that we're about to talk about. Yeah, yeah, we're about to crack into the movie of Steinsgate. Oh boy. What's and the name name of the movie? Something about Deja Vu. I watched it in the same media you did, so. I think a valid point. So it's not going to be different unless I just can't it's read. Load, load region of deja vu. See, cats. It's all about cats. Oh, it's such a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a all... very, very dull name. It's, it's loaded. It's mm. a loaded question. I feel like. Ending the series on such a high and then going to the OVA and feeling like a little bit eh. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, oh, this one. Come on. Let me make me, make me feel it again. Uh, yeah. The goodness. Um, Good. The goodness. The Okabe goodness. So, fortunately, we're watching it in an order that makes sense. So, yeah, basically, season one finishes and then the OVA is two months after that and I believe the film is one year after the OVA uh no I think it's one year after the series is it one year after the series okay so yeah. it's ten months beyond the, oh, yeah. the OVA yeah I think yeah anyway yeah, so that's a that's a thing and they're still doing stuff yeah still making gadgets I mean, they are they, well they've got the whole gang together to a degree, yeah, yeah, they're 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 still alive and not dead. Yes, and I suppose the start of the movie is Kurusu monologuing and then getting on a plane from the US to go and see everyone. Yeah, I think she wakes up and goes, "Oh yeah, that's right," because I think she, I feel like she, she kind of woke up in the pile of blood. Oh, like a, a a a memory spark. Yeah, like she's in the pile of blood, uh, in the place, and then it kind of just gets her on a plane, and then, uh, yeah, and then um, it goes back to Okabe in the gang, and Okabe is like, "Ha! Turn on the cool." Cool boy oh, machine. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was the name. Uh, something like that. It's, <laughs> it's like a, a a fridge with a bunch of fans attached to it. Yeah, PC fans, no less. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, th- and he's like, yeah, you know, maybe it would be cooler if the amount of fans you added to it didn't actually generate heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's more the fact that the whole way the fridge works is it generates heat from the back. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, to condense the air in the machine, which you then take out to blow onto people. I mean, like, yes, I don't call me stupid, but like, you got like air conditioning fan units that probably do stuff like that. Well, he does say that he's like, you know, you could just get an air conditioning unit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, no, can could be doing that. 
and uh, yeah. and tells Mayu to turn it on, and she goes, uh, "Are you sure? It doesn't okay. really work." Okay, I guess. <laughs> and then she turns it on, and then Daru complains that he's uh, it, it produces more heat than it cools the room down. Yep. Uh, and then he's, he's not wrong. He's playing his uh, his video games. There's a discussion about that. Yes, it's, it's, uh, it, there's also mention of hentai uh, at a certain point. Because mm-hmm. if I, I remember correctly, what happens is uh, Okabe's fantastic fan, wild fanboy machine uh, <laughs> blows up the the breaker, yeah. causing the power to go out in the in the lab, and Daru kind of loses his shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> grabs him by the throat, and he's like. Oh! Oh my god! I was halfway to the next save point. Do you have any idea how much progress that is? Uh. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, he's, he's super unhappy. He and he crying. mentioned hentai somewhere in that mad rant. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, and also they were talking into the llama face thing again. Oh, that's right. They were playing the llama game. The llam- Llamas with human faces. <laughs> what a game. Yeah. Oh my god. That was yeah. horrifying. <laughs> well, the llama with human faces. Y- yes, like just horrifying. Carl, Carl, what are you doing, Carl? It, it did really make me think of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm eating the, the faces of people. <laughs> no, he's not that? eating the faces of people, he's attaching them to balloons. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's eating. Is it baby meat? Oh, baby hands. Yeah, his his tummy had the rumblies. Yeah. And they could only... only be satisfied by baby hands. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? That might be one of my favourite absurdist cartoons because the level that it goes to is just incredible. Uh, it goes to scary levels. That guy should probably be condemned. I am like it's like there's a there's a guy on TikTok at the moment who I think his whole shtick is that he's trying to do those you know find out what Simpsons character find out what this character you are is but he does it by like duct taping his head to shapes and painting over it so that it looks like the character he's trying to achieve okay I, I don't think he's mentally well I feel like he might have some issues that he needs to talk out with a therapist or some medication that he maybe needs to take to help balance him out because he just doesn't seem okay. And it's really funny, but also just a slight tinge of concern anytime I'm watching him that this is like not healthy. No, no, it's definitely not healthy that. Uh, but I think that's generally most of the things we end up watching. Are probably created yes. by people that are not healthy. Yeah, that's very true. Speaking of that, I did start watching uh, with the kids. We started watching regular show. Uh, regular show. How far have you got into that now? Uh, halfway through season two. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I think I might have one. There's a, a very formulaic way that that show works, which is hey, you guys are fucking lazy and poor. Ah oh, man, I want to do that thing with the thing. Oh, let's do it this way. No, that's stupid. Ah, oh, but if we do it this way, it's going to be amazing. And then they do it that way. And then ghosts, aliens, the occult, something like that happens. And well, then inevitably it kind of works out to a degree in the end. And the, and the boss just shouts at them. Yeah, Benson just constantly yells at them, you're fired, over and over and over. Yeah, uh, and then he's like, "Oh, but maybe not this time, I guess, because you, things seem okay." And I don't know why. You sorry, shit. Out. Well done for you guys. <laughs> Holy shit! Get this down, or you're uh, fired. <laughs> he's uh That's a very. It, it's impressive that they are able to make something so formulaic, so different each time. Yeah, so much fun. Yeah, I've I've enjoyed it, and so- they've enjoyed it too. So much fun. Ah, good old death. Uh, stick hockey, as they called it. That was a good one. <laughs> Is the uh, that we've we've enjoyed Elo Governor 
which is an episode I really liked from before anyway. I've seen that one before. Oh, oh God. Oh, that was really good. Particularly the bit where uh, Mordecai wakes up <laughs> and opens his eyes and headlights come out of them is like very reminiscent <laughs> of horror movies from the 1980s. Yeah, that's that's rugby, isn't it? He's just hallucinating. He's just sitting yeah, there. Yeah, he's, he's just lo- losing his mind. Because he was uh, like, let's watch this because I'm not going to be scared of this. Honest. And he's just like, <laughs> Mark is just laughing it off like that's ridiculous. And rugby's just curled on the couch going, ah, ah. Hello, governor. <laughs> this is so good. It's uh, very silly. Very yeah. funny. And all it is is uh, a guy trying to get the video back off him, the money that they owe. I like the one where they have the master system and the TV breaks. Oh, is that the one where the? Uh, yeah, that's the one where it comes to life because they're uh, the boss. Yeah, because of course it does. Like they, <laughs> cause they, they try to fix the TV, and inevitably, what happens is the television comes to life, and to create the final boss of that game. Yeah, and they got this. Uh, murder of the furniture. I don't think Benton's about, and he comes back. Anyway, all I remember is the muscle man, one of the characters, and it is, uh, goes to his mate in the store and he gives him a free TV and then he gets fired and he walks in. Hey, muscle man, my boss found out I gave you a free tea and I got fired. Can I crash here for a bit? And then literally, well, I can't remember, but he just basically gets wasted think- by the, the boss man. <laughs> Does he not go, oh, never mind, and leaves? No, no. He gets wasted. Oh, <laughs> Literally, God. this gets turned into smoke or something because of whatever, whatever the other guy is. Like, he, he throws uh, sticks at, uh, at him or something like that. Uh, and then they're like, oh, yeah, his only weakness is furniture. <laughs> oh, God. That's right. So oh. it is. Yeah. A weird show. Anyway, uh, as you can probably tell, uh, the fact that we're probably <laughs> jumping the, this way around, this, uh, in my opinion, I think this movie's a little bit dull, if I'm honest. Well, it's... Yeah. I don't know. I suppose they were trying to think, oh, oh, we missed... Um... Yeah, no, we're not even there yet. Get to that point in a minute. Because nope. uh, this this is the part where they're all hanging out, and of course, then they the power cut has happened. But now, uh, now uh, they need to go and pick up Kurusu from uh, the airport. Yeah, well, the power cut happens, and Mister Braun kind of shouts out <laughs> from downstairs, and he says, "Isn't it customary for you to come up here?" And then he says, "If uh, if you don't get down here now, I'm putting your rent up." Okay, I'm coming down. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he bails out immediately. Yeah, and then <laughs> that is quite funny. And then he's out in front of the the radio building where the time machine landed and and crashed. Yes, and, that, and he has. And this is where we see that that kind of the first time uh, uh, glimpses of the other, yeah, the other world lines. And he's holding his head in pain. Like, ah! Yep. Um. Yeah. So, and then um, Mayuri's there. And he asks, are you all right? And he then whittles off some bullshit, mad scientist shit. Oh, yeah, um, I've been asked to do something like that. And she's like, oh, that's cool. I'll, I'll just go on ahead. Never mind me. Yep. Yeah, it, it, I like that. <laughs> she's like, you all right? He's like, oh, dude, everything is fine. And she's like, yeah, okay, I guess I'll see you later then. Yeah. And he's like, oh, but hey, maybe we could have hung out. Never mind, I guess. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I don't know. If that's part of maybe the whole part of the the movie. Yeah. Or, yeah. We'll get into that bit, but like where yeah, the kind of phase out. You know, it's like a bit of back to futuristic type deal. I yeah, think. it is a little bit. Uh, I think. Uh, so yeah, we. I think at this point we can probably jump forward to the. The airport where Ruka and uh, Mayuri mm-hmm. are going to uh, pick up Kurusu, mm-hmm. and she's extremely 
extremely, extremely, extremely um, excited to see Kurosu. Yeah. I like like this is the this is uh, this is the bit where I realize is like oh yeah I, I don't really like Kurosu that much. She's really not a nice person sometimes. Uh, and she's like oh I didn't expect you to be here. And then it's like oh hey and you are and she like tr- like tries to remember <laughs> Ruka's name. Yeah. It's this name, isn't it? It's like that's right, and then it's like remember it's a dude. Yeah. What what does that add to that? I I know, I think it's just the fact that uh, she's gotta remember that he's did not treat her like a girl. I I but but surely that comment is only relevant if she remembers that there was a switch. <laughs> Well, yeah, she well, doesn't. Old turtle, because uh, he's you know he's he looks very much like a girl. In fact, so oh, much I so mean, that uh, the next scene is them walking down the street together, and it's just full on crotch shot of him and yeah. Carissa for way too, long, way too long, way but, too long, way too long. So, um. Is it okay? Does it make it any better that Rook is a dude? I mean, it's equal opportunity, I guess, but still, it's just. You know, Chris is. is all, she's kind of walking behind Chris a bit. So. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a weird. Either way, awkward. they uh, end up going back to the to the lab. Oh, well, not quite. Uh, Do they not? No, no, they have a. Uh, Mayuri mentions that Dara's got a girlfriend. Oh god! Yes, this is the other reason that I realize it's like, oh yeah, Chris is not a really nice person. No, um, she's like, no, don't believe you. That's bullshit. Yeah, what was he done? Fake. It's all fake. Yeah. And then, and then, how is how is he tricked her? Yeah. And then they show her the picture, and she's like, no, absolutely not. There's no way. Yeah. Was, and uh, then, uh, of course, Daru's there. But yeah, uh, eventually. But no, he literally appears that second that they're she's talking yeah. about it. It's like. You're telling a lie! Literally, it's the first word that she says. <laughs> like, like, he, he looks over and he's like, Oh, hey, Mayuri. Hi, Ruka. Wait, is that Kurusu? And she's like, What the hell have you done? How are you tricking this woman? Yeah, it's not lying to um, what? what? And it's just this thing. It's like, Have you even, like, how? It's like, Oh, just talking to her online, like, you know, about cosplay and stuff. And she's like, Oh, have you even sent her a picture? And he's like, Yes, but then we see that it's only. A picture of his face, pretty much just his eyes, mm-hmm. uh, and she goes, "Yep, not surprised." And you're like, "God, you're terrible." Yeah, like I know that Daru is a total perv. Yeah. <laughs> I know that, huh? but my God, does she just fucking knock him down? Yeah, I mean, don't need that, dude. Don't. I mean, maybe we'll be setting narrow the right narrow. Anyway, isn't like the person that the show is pretty much. Was it the girl that Okabe chased in the uh, OVA? OAV? Yes. Presumably. I think I it th- is, yeah. I think it is, eh? Um, uh, and then... We also... We kind of skipped a bit. At the airport. Uh-huh. As, they, as they leave, he's it kind of homes into a, a person... Uh, with like buttons on her coat. Oh, somebody that was watching them. Someone was watching them with buttons on yeah, their coat. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the imminent threat. The mysterious imminent threat. Yep, the mysterious imminent threat. You know, well, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. And then they get into the lab. We'll jump into the lab now. Yeah. Uh, and like no one's there, and Dara goes, "Oh yeah, he's he's out on an errand for Mister Braun type thing." And then she's yeah. like, "God, this place is such a dump." <laughs> yeah, again, just sort of like, oh, and she was a complete dick to the customs officer in the airport. Oh yeah, that's right. It's like reason for your visit. I don't have to tell you anything. Yeah, pretty much. 
<laughs> whoa, whoa! I just asked you how, you, like, why you were here. It's my job, ma'am. Oh yeah. Presumably, she got uh, delayed at that point. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe not. You know, so we're not quite as bad as Okabe, but yeah. Well, that's mainly because he he did give us reason for being there, which is to overthrow the government. <laughs> That, that never goes down <laughs> to well. To be fair, as we said, yeah, like the last time, I feel like any opportunity where your answer is, allow me to read from my manifesto, <laughs> is never a good start. Like, that's immediately a, uh, not sure if that's the best way to approach whatever you're about to approach. I will now will always use that line. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, reason for your visit? Hang on. I just need to reach into my pocket to grab my copy Wait. of my manifesto. Oh, yes. Walk into sure. a restaurant. Uh, <laughs> and you're... Hang on, I need to get my manifesto out. Yeah. Table for two, please. Yeah, table for two. Uh, and I'm going to overthrow the government. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I say... I sent that video earlier on. I, uh, sorry, I, I know I'm uh, detouring a little bit here, but <laughs> I I have realised that the majority of my humour lies very much in just absurdity, mm -hmm. and I think that that's that's the thing that cracks me up more than anything else. And one of the videos I sent earlier on is a dude who just like is doing the you know the usual influencer type thing, using his phone to record into the mirror, uh -huh. and he's like, "Hey, just woke up at midday." having a great day and he just kind of walks up to the mirror and he's like there's copper wire in your skin sell it grow more deflate the currency and it's like what does that even mean why would anyone ever say it? why would anyone think that oh, why is that a thing oh, oh fuck. no oh, we passed this stage Steve past the conspiracy theory stage that was yeah. all Lynn and no, yeah, and and now and now and I'm deeply concerned about the status of the copper wire in my skin. <laughs> <laughs> I just I think it's the the thing that gets me more about that joke than anything else is like it, well that's a dumb thing to say, but the bit at the end where he says it's like you know deflate the currency it's like oh so there's a mission to your insane weird ramblings. <laughs> This is great. So that is this manifesto is you know the the skin copper. Yeah. How you can grow more and sell it to deflate the currency. I mean, do we give it if we can just grow copper in our skin, and it just it comes would definitely out... help with the copper shortage. There's a copper shortage. I don't know. I I, I feel like I read that somewhere. Mm, possibly. Um. There's a semiconductor shortage. That's a definite. Oh, that's the thing. That's that's fucked up the whole world. Everything. Oh, no yeah. cars. Oh, yeah. No computers. Well, and not anytime soon. Uh, yeah, I noticed like the lead time on on new car, like new cars off the lot, is about thirty eight weeks at this point. Oh wow, that's like a year. Yeah, wow. it's, it's pretty nuts. Mine is fourteen weeks. It's not far. It's like nine months. It's still a long time. <laughs> so basically, if you get pregnant and you need a car by the time you have got your order now, then yeah, that's it. You're all good. You need to You're get all good. You need to put your order in for that car for your pregnant wife that's just found out she's pregnant, uh, so you can drive her to the hospital. Yep. Or, or the copper. Or or your your father figure who might be pregnant if she wants to identify as a man I don't know how that oh, works. I thought you meant like just generally a pregnant man which I was like all for with Arnold Schwarzenegger so <laughs> and Danny DeVito no, yeah that, yeah was I that, was all was, was, that, was that the same thing uh, I don't know I, no, that's twins that's not gonna twins. lie my my, uh, <laughs> my knowledge of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger comedy from the 90s is pretty much limited to Jingle all the way um, Bob is a uh, last action hero. Well, I suppose that was a last action That's hero. That's not really a comedy. That's more action y. Yeah, okay. You're right. It's pretty bad. <laughs> oh, I, I like the last action hero. It was alright. It's just a bit corny. 
for it's our, better our, than Jingle All the Way, which yeah. the only prevailing memory I have of it is him going, "It's Turbo Time." Uh, so, yeah, that's it. He, he he tried this bit. I mean, he had twins. Twins was a thing. Was that the name? Wait, no, that was that one, was Danny DeVito. That was Danny DeVito, where he was Danny DeVito's what was the twin one where, brother. What was the one where Arnold Schwarzenegger was pregnant? Oh, I don't know. Twins too. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo Pregaroo Pregaroo I don't know What movie were we talking about? Uh, Steinsky Oh yeah Deja Vu Deja Vu uh, Load Loady Deja Vu L- re- Load region of Deja Vu uh, Is that where you, Is that like when you put cheese on Deja Vu? When you load the region Yeah isn't that what Loaded uh, Loaded uh, chips are because they got cheese on it. I mean, I get. I think loaded chips are chips with anything on top of them. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, you remember the? Do you remember the nightclub in Dundee, which was called Deja Vu? I do. Sadly. Yeah, that was a nightclub. <laughs> it's close to the word I would have used to describe it. Yeah. It was. I think it was open during the night. And I mean, it there was, was it's a some club. some form of clubbing happening in it. There was a uh, a a point in time where it was trying to compete with all of the other clubs for the uh, you know the hard earned cash of the the youth, uh, and then I think it became an over forties nightclub. So yeah, yeah, it certainly did that. I went to, it and I wasn't over forties. I also went to it and was not over forty. Yeah. Rule breaking. I I went there and there were some guy at work oh um uh, at BT um not work. Uh tried to set me up yeah. with a lass. He also worked in BT. Um but yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> I feel like Setups in nightclubs is never really the best. No, it's no. I only went there for a little hour, mate. Uh, for reasons I only ever, I only actually ever go to nightclubs for other people chasing women. I uh, it never ends well for me. Usually, went to nightclubs because the the alcohol was cheap. Yeah, in the nightclub I frequented. I mean, it never was anywhere else, but... Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. No, I just always seem to go there with people chasing women. And... Oh, I never... That certainly didn't end well with me with the one in the ferry. There was a nightclub in the ferry. Is there? There was. What, is it the RNLI? <laughs> no. It was a... It was a long estimate. It's a bunch of flats now. Um, it's a bit just past the I think it's the, the pavilion it's called the glass cafe. the glass bit yeah 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 I know where you are I and mean, it's just past that and there's like a set of buildings just on the road there that was a nightclub there was a nightclub there yeah yeah I went there on Christmas day and wow I swear I got drugged <laughs> well I uh much of my it, st- it, stupidity of uh, drinking something I drink was lying there in the toilet. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, that's maybe. I mean, it's. I'm not saying it's your fault, but I'm not. I don't think you helped your case there. It's not helped my case. I, uh, so I was wasted. There was a nightclub in my hometown that uh, was literally the bowling alley, <laughs> and then at night it became a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so bad. Classy. Classy. No, that, this oh, was... Oh, was fucking rough, man. No, this nightclub wasn't much better. <laughs> anyway, so I saved someone's life. Wait, when? But the nightclub, because I also took took that roofie for them. I took one for that miscellaneous person who was going to get drugged. <laughs> saved someone. That's the way to look at it. 
not, yeah, not, not the fact very that, noble. Not the fact that I was like I went to my mate. It's like, hey, it's maybe time for us to go home. I'm, I'm going to go out out the club, and then next thing I know, I'm out the club and get woken up by my mate on the on the pavement. Wow. And the only ambulance wow. on during that night got called out for me. Nice. Well, that's what they claim. I can't see nine wells only have one ambulance on at Christmas night. I I mean, the way the Scots generally party. Yeah. One Christmas ambulance Day. per city doesn't seem enough. No. No, no, not at all. Especially when nine wells is on the other side of town, which is a good six, yeah, eight true. miles away. Um. Anyway, Very yeah. true. And I was like, my mouth was so dry that I was, I was trying to say, get me a drink of water. My mouth is so dry, but I couldn't see it. So I kind of motioned to it, like the drinking motion, and they're like, no, no, you had enough, mate. <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> you can't, damn you. <laughs> I meant water. I need that sounds fun. more like, uh, it sounds more like ecstasy. Do you think it was ecstasy? I don't know that, that uh, there's a story... Uh, I understand, like, a guy I was at university with, uh, (laughs) (laughs) the police, that somebody, he was at a nightclub, he had a bunch of ecstasy, and I think they were, they had rumbled him, uh, (laughs) and he went, oh, shit, and just ate it. Oh, fuck. And, uh, like, uh, the next morning, was in the the halls, and he was just like... (laughs) Cotton mouth, just like <laughs> <laughs> having like kind of gnawed away at his own face overnight. Uh, oh wow, yeah. he's an interesting guy. Yeah, I well, I don't know unless they decide to stick eggs in some random drink in the toilet. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how people. I'm I'm not a drug user, so I don't really know. I don't know, but all I know is, uh, yeah, I it certainly wasn't. It's never been like I've never been that weirdly hungover or weirdly not tight by drink before, ever in my entire life. That's the only time. Yeah. And I've certainly drank a lot to excess, and certainly many nights I've drank to the point where I've lost sight, which is fun. I was in the the union, and the, I was like, and we're all kind of standing around this like small table down stairs and. Mono, I think it's called. The, the yeah, yeah. Club. And uh, just like uh, not in in the nightclub, but just out to the side of it. So you know how you go oh. like through the main doors at the top, and you yeah. go we go downstairs, and, go down. and then yeah. just to the left, as you go down, it's like oh, I think it's where you, it's like normally a cafe during the day. Yep. And the nightclub's to the other side, so we're over there. Drinking away, and then uh, I kind of like couldn't see far. I saw a seat though, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have this seat. And then at the top of my voice, I go, Yoink! and take this seat and then sit down. And then the people at the tail just kind of stood up. I went, What the fuck, mate? And I was like, What? And then luckily, I was just surrounded by like guys who were twice my size. And they all kind of stood up and went, nope, give that seat back, dude. I was like, all right. <laughs> and I gave it back. And then that was it. Luckily, there was no no fight, maybe. Well, at least I didn't get involved. All, all I know after that, I was uh, quickly ditched. <laughs> so I may have caused a fight, but I didn't take part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I, I just get stopped in the street for a cigarette once, and then I told the guy I didn't have any money or cigarettes, and he wasn't really pleased with that answer, so he punched me. <laughs> and but I, I I didn't remember I didn't know this, uh, and the guy I was with, uh, like all I remember was them being like really angry, and then the guy going, "Come on, let's go, let's go then." And I was like, "All right, okay, yeah, I guess they eventually got the." <laughs> got the message and then we're like walking away and my friend's like you alright? and I'm like yeah why? he's like you just got hit in the face I was like oh oh no didn't didn't feel that so <laughs> um, 
it was like, oh shit, okay. Uh, that was not not good. Was that uh, um, after a night of drinking? Oh yeah, I mean yeah. I was he- heavily intoxicated, uh, but the the benefit to that, of course, was that uh, it didn't hurt as much when I woke up the next morning as I imagine it would have done, <laughs> had I prepared myself to be hit. <laughs> Instead, I just kind of took a hit, closed my eyes, I think, and then kind of went, hmm, all right. And they were like, oh, why didn't he fall over? (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Just kind of abandoned ship. And it was like, all right, bye. (laughs) This is so stupid. Uh, Yeah, don't drink, guys. Don't don't drink. uh... I mean, unless you're going to get punched, then it kind of helped. I mean, yeah, I mean, you see all these people really... We are drunken people that do random shit, and it's like, how did they not just like die? It's it's because um, you know, like they fall down stairs and they just get up and then walk yeah. off. And it's like just the... bodies of full relaxed muscle, <laughs> yeah. just kind of blah. blah. Yeah, I don't, don't know. Um, my my dad was telling a story about one of his friends it's way back. He used to have the boat on the on Loch Lomond. Uh huh, and uh, one of them was like wasted or something like that, and he kind of gets off the boat and is like, "Right, I'm I'm going home" or something like that, and there's a dinghy, so he's jump, he drops off my dad's boat, uh, and then he's it's quite tall, and the boat kind of like raised like that at front because he's also off balanced it. And all he does is uh-huh. put his other foot forward and like balances it, <laughs> and then sits in the boat, and then just starts to like roll. But then he uh, he didn't put the oars in properly on the boat in the water. So when he was pulls them back, he falls backwards. <sighs> oh, the shit that you do when you're wasted. Uh, anyway, um. I- Let's let's uh let's let's double time through the next few steps. Yeah, uh, I think we should. Um, so they're in the they're in the lab. Kurusu is now there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Slugging it off. Okabe comes up and is like, ah, oh, I wish he says it would have the job should have taken a couple of minutes. It did not take a couple of minutes. God damn it. Yeah. And he's like, oh, th- my assistant's here. Uh, and then he pretends to take a phone call. Yeah. In the organization. Like to try and make it seem like I guess I can tolerate her being here again. She's like, "How dare you yeah. tell me that I don't belong here and like ask me to prove my right to be here? I'm a card carrying member of this damn laboratory. You gave me the pen and all this stuff." And he's like, "Uh, it's the it's the whim of Stein's Gate. So I guess like you're here. It's <laughs> fine, I suppose." Yeah, um, and uh, Mary and um. Ruka's just watching this and going, oh, look, it's so cute. They're having their wee lovers tiff. And it's like... <laughs> uh, it's not. They're being total arseholes to each other, as always. And it's very annoying. Lovers tiff, uh, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Abusive relationship. Mm. Um, and then... then uh, as um, <sighs> Kurusu is like, oh, and I brought you presents. Uh, uh, yeah. Mi- Miuri, I got you this. And hey, Ruka, this is for you, I guess. I didn't remember your name barely, but here's a gift. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it's like, but nothing for you. Fuck you, Okabe. Fuck uh, you. Yeah, and Okabe. Nothing, I, didn't get, I didn't get anything for the guys. Uh, yeah. That's what she says. Yeah, and then Okabe hides something in his pocket too and goes, huh. Oh, yeah. All right. Is that how you're going to play it? I'm not going to do anything like this shit. Uh, and then. Uh, Monica, Moyoka, Moyoka, Moika, Moika, and um, Ferris appear at the door and go, "Ah, we were told there's a barbecue happening," and they they were like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, 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 to mark the return of Chris. Yeah, and it's like, uh, no, 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 what? cut that, stop, stop <laughs> that. <laughs> Definitely didn't say that. Oh yeah, and then he pawns it off as some like weird uh, thing, which uh, uh, yeah. Ferris. Totally goes in, in with it and goes, ah, oh, meow, 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 meow. It's, meow. it's the, the seven captains of the apocalypse or whatever again, isn't it? Yeah. I, uh, I, one thing I 
love about these characters, particularly Ferris, is that <laughs> she just goes whole hog into that, and I think that's amazing. I love the fact that she's just so into that. It's hilarious to me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's like, oh yeah, seems like the 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 organization can take control of any digital media and just do anything they want now. Like, oh, I see. It's like, yeah, so you didn't invite people to celebrate Chris's return. Yeah. No, no, that was the organization part of their master plan, <laughs> presume. Yeah. Uh yeah, yeah, I guess so. And then she gets really pissed off and is like, I need to go and check in at my hotel anyway. Yeah. Uh and uh I think my ear then convinces her to stay. Cause like, oh Let's round up the tail, the round table, or the circle. Oh yes, that's right, Miri. Get a round table started off here. Yeah, we've I... had a we've had a tutoru already as well. Tutoru at a certain point, I feel because uh... uh, there's several in this movie <laughs> that <Yeah>. I enjoy. <laughs> there's one where it goes tutoru. That means it's lunchtime. That was a good one. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> would, yeah. What I can't think. I can't remember if it's been already or not. It's the, what did you bring? Oh, I thought chicky nuggies was probably. It's like, didn't we have that yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's later. That's uh. I like that. That's when he he's not about. Um. Yeah, yeah. Uh so they all start having a party. Even Mister Bronze up. Yeah, I'm he's, much... he's man in the barbecue. Uh, is he? He was. No, I was... thought he was there, knocking back some brews and. Oh yeah, he was man knocking... in the grill. I don't think he was man in the grill. I think that was all Ferris. They kind of left it to Ferris. Maybe I imagined that. He just got Carissa drunk because he brought like alcoholic beer. That's right. Which is, uh... It's like wait. Are you drunk? Yeah, non-alcoholic beer. It's like, non-alcoholic beer is for quitters. And it's like, <laughs> no, I think quitters would even avoid non-alcoholic <laughs> beer. <laughs> non-alcoholic beer is for pussies. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's just... That's why you... Yeah, that, she gets... Yeah, she gets hammered. No, go ahead. I'm just saying no, uh, that. That's that's what you probably would have said if, if it wasn't. Yeah. Like, but the... Uh, PG the, rate. They end up, and of course... Yeah, well, that's true. It yeah. ends up uh, very. Uh, it gets a bit personal, and Kurosu is uh, kind of, uh, kind of angry. It's like you tell me you love me, and then you fucking leave me, and then I don't hear from you for a whole year, and you're babbling on about timelines and yeah. world lines and time travel, and it's all bullshit. Yeah, and she's really kind of like just wailing on him entirely he's like I, I i i don't know what to i'm hmm. <laughs> yeah i'm i'm wrong and also you're you're really really drunk maybe she come downstairs get off oh, me God. type thing blah 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 and then i think she claims she loves him and he's yep. like right we're getting out of here and then they start going down the stairs and then she starts saying some stuff and then rubbing her face against his face yeah she says hold I me uh, Okabe, <laughs> and then she pulls her face up against his face and just starts rubbing her face and goes, that feels nice the stubble is interesting and he's like please stop that this is awkward and then uh, lose her foot and, uh, and fall down the stairs sure do and then she's on the couch all with a hangover I, I don't know if it's a hangover or a head injury uh, <laughs> potentially both we just talked about this, man. You don't get a injuries where you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. But, uh, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, is this the part where he then gives her the present? Yeah. Um, that's right, yeah. So like, here, I got you this. Cause of course, yeah, because he'd hidden it, as you said, like, when it turns out that she kind of, like, does absolutely, she really loves him, but she really wants to make everyone think that she hates his guts. I think so, yeah. Or at least... And he's a bit uncomfortable that she's kind of shown the affection in front of everyone. You know, everyone kind of yeah. knows that their thing. Um, so, 
yeah, he gives over this present, which is a monogrammed spoon and fork. Which is a callback to the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was her key phrase. Mm-hmm. Made her uh, believe him. Yeah, yeah, like when he was travelling back, that was the phrase that he would, the, the object he would use to say that she wanted in order for her to go, yeah, I didn't tell anyone that. Yeah, pretty much. And then she's like, how do you know that? Oh, it's because that, oh, get out of my mind, fucking dick. Yep. Especially now that I'm Diff- wasted. Ugh. A uh, different world line, I guess. Yeah, and then she um, pulls it away. Well, while they're on the roof, he does kind of like have like weird flashbacks up there too. He does, yeah. And then, uh, and then I, is that to do with Moika? No, I think it's still he just kind of flashing back to start remembering um, Mayuri's death happening. That's yes, it's the train. It's the yeah. train section. He remember long ago. Yeah, day. and then. He downstairs the Kurusu my Yuri comes down and goes yep. Oh you're gonna miss like the thing that Ferris is making for you. Yep. And uh I, and then oh, I can't really remember all the memories. He has another set of flashbacks and then Yeah, he has a bit of a break. <laughs> yeah, proper mental break at this point because he basically goes, Mayuri Get behind me! I've got to go! And you too, Kurosu, get behind me! And then gets a knife and unsheathes yep. it. Cause, and then Mr. Braun comes down the stairs and he has like the knife to his throat and he goes, and he goes, whoa, what the hell, dude? You crazy! And he's like, oh, wait. And it kind of looks. Daru is in the room too, actually, though, I think. He's sitting in the computer. Yeah, I think he is. He, yeah, know, he, he, is. he was upstairs. And he goes, oh wait, this is this is the Steins Gate's world line, isn't it? Yep. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's that's right, yeah. Um, and people are like, I have no idea what you're talking about, crazy person. And Chris well, is... No, doesn't Kurisu reassure him and go, it is? Yeah, he, he so does. So he kind of goes, oh, okay. Yeah. I actually, I like this scene um, because he's so apologetic. Yeah. Well, he he's... seems really... <laughs> he's downtrodden and deflated and concerned and uh and yet Mr. Braun's like, God, there's something fucked up with that kid <laughs> like quite loudly as he's he's leaving the room. <laughs> Pretty much. But yeah. Uh, what an ass. He, well he's he's always known that. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Uh anyway, so uh part ends end of the night is Chris on in her having. She a sh- goes back to her hotel room finally to check in. Yeah, and have a shower. Yep, and this is where we get the uh, the the return of the button up bandit type person. No, he. I think they appear at some other point, and you see that they got a cap on and a hoodie. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. But then, please have a shower. Uh, you have no uh, shower. Go da da da. Starts thinking about things again. Uh, and then the door opens in our hotel room. And then she goes, "Huh? Is that is that a uh, room keeping?" And she goes, "I put that sign on it. God damn it!" And then she's like, "Oh, I can't open this door. What the hell? Yep, I don't did I lock myself in. No." And then she gets like a, a disguised voice saying, you need to remember about microwaves, mobile phones and CERN. Keep those in yep. your head. It, it would serve you well to remember these things. I, like it, it was giving me serious Saw vibes of it's like, do you want to play a game? Yeah. <laughs> There's a key in this room. Yeah, you got yeah your, it was all sort of very Saw-like. Got to cut your hand off to get it. <laughs> <laughs> You yourself have been a total dick to everyone. It's time. There's a key inside your brain to open the door, and if you don't open it in five minutes, the room's going to explode. Inside your brain. (laughs) 
Yeah, it's it's <laughs> like well, you take the risk of doing open <laughs> open brain surgery on yourself in the next five minutes in a completely unsterile environment, or just let yourself blow up. I'd just let myself blow up to be fair. So there was a skit along those lines. I can't remember who did it, but it was like we skit. It was basically um, this guy is doing. You know, it's meant to be like saw and threatening the guy. It's like you got to do this. You got to do this. And it's like, yeah, well, the two options you give me, I'm going to like pretty much die if I did one, either or. So I'll not bother waste my time, and we'll just die. Let's go with that. But <laughs> you can't be doing that. You got to have ch- no, no. I'm cool with it. <laughs> I've accepted my fate. I Thank accepted. You. Yes, yes. Thanks. It's, and then he's like, no, you're no fun. Um, so, uh, so yeah, she gets told to remember those things, and that's kind of the the end of that mysterious part. And the door unlocks, and you kind of like get a, a shot on the other side of the door, and you kind of hear Suzuha's voice at that point because it's not started. Yep. It's like, oh, it's her. Like you didn't realize it was her, but oh, it's yeah. her. <laughs> <laughs> the other oh, person that character I thought it probably was. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's not it's not like the only time traveling characters, not all could be is here. Um Yeah, it's, it's not like it was gonna be the badge salesman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never know, man. He was the taxi driver in the OV. Oh shit, that's right. <laughs> Fuck. Uh and then um Yeah, so is that does that? Does she go to do some laundry? Oh yeah, she does because she goes into laundry. Yeah, she does. And she goes to that laundromat there in the corner, which Okabe uses, yep. and goes, "Ah, oh, that was weird. I'm gonna have to talk to like the hotel people about their car- their key card code." And... Yep. And uh, and then she's very goes... upset that Okabe's there. <laughs> and he- and heard her speaking out loud. Going, oh, I what what happened in your room then? None of your business. And then uh, he goes. She opens up uh, one of the washing machines, and um, Okabe goes, "I won't be doing that." Yep. If uh, you don't do that, it gets all covered in mildew, condensation, mildew. So yeah, and then she opens it up. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's Dara's underwear. And then she's like, oh. <laughs> No! Whoops. That's why I carry hand uh, sanitizer everywhere. My, I remember yeah, it was very COVID prescient. Yeah, 10 years before, man. Sorry, to happen, I think though. that fucking Suzaha might have told her about it. <laughs> no. By the way, society's going to shut down for two fucking years. <laughs> it's part of the Third World War, man. Oh, God. Um. Yeah, so. And then they have kind of like a weird heart heart conversation about shit in there. Uh, he's got a ripped lab coat. She actually finally produces the gift that she actually has. So you're like, I got you this lab coat. It's not a gift though. It was on sale. Yeah. And also, it's just to thank you for the gift that you gave me. Even though I openly admitted that I bought this in America. Yep. Which is where we're not right now. Where we're not right now, and was well before you gave me the gift. I mean, she's not logical in any form. No, for someone that kind of, uh, oh my god, sorry, I am so tired. For someone that prides themselves on being sort of very logical and very scientific, she's not very either of those things very often. No. Anyway, so she's basically talking to Okabe, sewing him up, saying, Oh, does this thing about data vu stuff? And I think they're just like memories from another world line that are bleeding to it. And he's like, Yeah, that's cool. I think everyone's got Steins Gate. Uh, they just don't realize it. Reading Steiner. Yeah. Don't realize it. It's universal. Um, and then it's like, She starts sewing. It's like, This feels very familiar, but not quite. I know it's the first time I've done it, but it feels like I had done it before. And she's sewn up this cut on his cuff. And he's like, eh, it's kind of what happened, but not quite. It's not the same. Yep. But then it's the same thread that she uses, because she says, I don't have any white thread, dude. Yep. 
<clears throat> the classic pink. Yeah. And they have a conversation. And then does she throw the lab coat at him? And then he disappears? She does. Like one of those um, YouTube videos where the people hold yeah, up the, sh- the sheet. hiding from a dog. And, and she, Yeah, hiding from the dog. And they, they just like run into the door. Oh, there's one, isn't there one where the people have failed and they literally like do it's, that and then and smash into the door. Smash into the door frame. <laughs> yep. Uh, I think what happens is, is he's got the new lab coat on and she finishes the stitching, throws it, obscuring her vision of him mm-hmm. and then instead of him catching it, it just lands on a chair in front. Just still, yeah. He's gone. And she, she constantly is like, you know, he was right here a minute ago and then she very angrily goes to the lab to try and sort of uh, find where the fuck he went to. Yeah. Like, do you know where he is? Who? 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 Who do you mean? Do you, Do you mean me? No, him, the other guy, the the guy who started this lab. So you do mean me? Yeah. And Daru's like, I'm very confused here. And it's like you know, I can't remember his name for some reason. Designation Double O One. Oh. I was like, no, we never, uh, we never gave that one. Yeah, we told you that when you joined. Um, and that when they burst in, the he's like being proudly saying, "Aha, I have invented the, I have improved this new uh, cooler machine and stuck fans inside the the fridge too." <laughs> yep, and that's the, right. And then he and uh, Mayuri has this wee conversation about how he is the founding member of the lab. It is like weird. He's behaving very ho hin kyoma ish that's for sure. Yeah, less weird, less peril weird. Less mental, but yeah. yeah, sort of still a bit mad science-y. Yeah. Um, and... Anyway, yeah, so the other conversation is like, oh, I don't remember um, him, the guy, God. What's his name? He's not there. I don't remember his name either now. Uh, and then I think she runs back to the hotel room, or no, it's like a few days, and she say starts to not feel his presence herself at that point. Yes, and, and this is where we have the conversation with Suzaha. Uh, no, not quite. Is that because because uh, we have to build the time machine? Yeah, so that's she what we're, that's what we're leading to right now. Yeah, so she's a. Uh, She's sitting on her bed and eating her yeah. noodles, cup noodles, cup yep. ramen, yep. Um, and notice that she's eating a, with a, a spoon or a fork. It has the monogram, the monogram yeah. on it, and then she uh, goes, "Wait, hang on, what's this? That, that, oh yeah, it definitely means something was here." And then she searches the room for the note that she wrote down when she goes, you must remember about the phone, the microwave, and CERN. And then she phones Daru, and Daru goes, oh yeah, yeah, I decided to hack into CERN. Oh, why are you that for? Oh, just for the lols. <laughs> it's like, I don't believe you. <laughs> and then uh, she says, oh, I'm coming over now. And uh, runs out the door That's naked. Right. Half naked, yep. and then runs back. This is where we uh, there's a bit of a a, a a replication of a scene to a degree, because uh, Miuri is working on her cosplay costume. Yeah, uh, and she's like, "Oh, what do you think, Kurusu?" And she's like, "Oh, it is very cute," and. Uh, Daru is busy building the time machine to to curse his specification, and Mary is like, "Ah, oh, done! I won." He's like, "Yeah, you did, but we're not far behind." And it's like this exact same conversation happened in the series. Yeah, it's kind of weird. They also have like a conversation, basically, for that where they talk about Daru. Go, yeah, you did this. Why are you hacking the CERN? Oh, I was for the cut lols. Is it not because you think that there's something missing? And my uni, why do you keep buying yeah. the Dr. Pepper when no one fucking That's drinks right. it in the in the lab? Oh, it's yeah. in case someone comes around. <clears throat> it's like, but no one drinks it in the lab. 
don't you think this is weird that oh. people are doing things for th for circumstances you can't be sure of why? Yeah, and so, oh yeah, I think you might be right. And then they start building the time machine, and yeah. and, have and that then scene. they they do build the time machine. Yeah. Kurusu decides to go back mm -hmm. to the time just before he disappears, mm -hmm. uh, and Daru's like, "Oh, that's more than forty eight hours. That doesn't seem like a good idea." She's like, why? She's like, I, I don't know. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah, so they kind of and, like, yeah. refer back to the series again. I don't know, see these de deja vu scenes? You think uh -huh. they're, they're being put in for a simple reason that... Uh, It's kind of like they're obviously rewriting the thing. It's it's weird that she's working on that dress again a year later, though. That's the only thing it got me. Well, rather than I, I, but it's it's a year later in this timeline. Yeah, but the circumstances around the what's happening are just a year apart. It's like when they were pushing out Mayuri's death by a day at a time. It's like almost as if this 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 conversation and series of events was an inevitability. Yeah, yeah, but it seems weird it's the same dress that she's working on. She but it's his absence, right? Yeah, he's he's not there, but I'm sure she should be working on that same dress uh, the year before. But like I say, is that it, all, all it is is that that exact scene... Is just pushed out a year, or or maybe, maybe right. That isn't essentially the scene that you're thinking is happening, but it is actually a memory that they're Could recalling. Be. Could be because later in the in the movie, when she goes back to the point where they're doing the thing, she's got a different dress. She's got some That's weird true. made outfit thing. That Dar is really excited to see her in. Yeah, that's also true. Fucking. <laughs> but Okabe's there at that point. Yeah, and he goes, what a card. Type thing. Yeah. Um, so, of course, she, Kurosu does travel back in time mm -hmm. based on what she discussed. Yep. And. Uh, <clears throat> is that the barbecue? And now he's there. Yeah, so he's there at the barbecue. Yep. And then. He phases out. Yep. It's like every time he has his uh, headaches, he phases away out out of the out of sync. And then Dar is there proposing that he's the lab member and posing a toast. And then he's back, yep. and then everyone's kind of like, "Oh yeah, okay, he's there." Yep. And, and then uh, she gets a phone call when and from Suza he goes, "Aha." I am across the, the building uh, on this other building Come spying on me. Yeah. Cash me outside. Yeah, uh, let's meet here on this bridge. Yep. And they meet there and have a wee conversation. And says, right. We can get the we can sort this shit out because Okabe's memories are fucked and it's making them desync in this like, timeline to Point R, or something, yep. and that which is zero 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 point zero 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 one, um, tangent from this world line. It's like what is it she's saying? It's like clothes getting caught in the wind while they're on a clothesline. Uh, He's getting whisked in and out of realities. No. It was uh, some a uh, scarf getting caught on a. Air turbine, air air propel, uh, air propel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's something like, it's like getting whipped into different realities. He's getting choked to death, more like it. But never mind. Um, that's the <laughs> that's the way I I saw that me <laughs> metaphor. Uh, <laughs> uh, right. Anyway, so does that, uh, and then he appears on the bridge, and he says, yep. "Leave it alone." I want you to go and 
take take that uh, time travel machine away and destroy it in the future, so it didn't happen. Uh, well, he then, gets he gets really angry about the fact that she's created a time machine again. I so, do you have any idea how much how difficult it was to get to here so that you are both okay? Do you understand how complicated that was? It was not easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's in the lab. They end up going back to the lab and having a discussion there. Um, Essentially, the whole point is is that he is trying to convince her that his absence is not the end of the world. Yeah. That if his absence is what it takes for the Steins Gate world line to be okay and them to be okay, then everything should be fine. Yeah, and she just needs to let him go. Yeah, because he's basically willing to sacrifice himself for their happiness is essentially what yeah. is happening here. Um, so, and tells us how to go back and destroy his time machine. Uh, yep. Susa basically levels with her one and goes, oh, yeah, from the future, you built the time machine, Carissa, type thing. Um, and then the, and then uh, Okabe basically berates Kurusu, like you said, and then she follows him for like the entire night to a mm-hmm. train station. And then he says some shit like, You really need to not do this. It's a bad idea. Look at me. It's fucked me up bad. Uh, forget about me. Really, forget about me. Oh, you know what? I'm going to kiss you. And then she's like, You fucking bastard. Yep, can't be doing that. <laughs> and uh, then they do it again. Yeah. Uh, and then she kind of mopes, trying to forget about him. Uh, in the uh, in their hotel room. So uh, yep, no mm-hmm. more, no more conversation with him. Nothing else. I forgot about him. And then it's just like, nope, I can't be doing that. I got to go and see him. And then she charges out. And uh, gets to the lab where Mayu's making her weird red maid ma- dress thing, which Dar is yep. super keen to see her in, which is wrong. Um, yep. And Okabe is like, yeah, you're got like this oh, obnoxious grin on his face. I was like, God damn it, Dar, hold that back. <laughs> and then. Uh, Kurusu bursts in the room and goes, Okabe, I love, and then disappears. He, yep, just like the other time, except the other way around. <laughs> yeah. And then he's actually holding the bottle of uh, Dr. Pepper in his hand. Yeah. And it falls and it just... to the floor, and then uh, Dario goes, Clean up an aisle three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then they start cleaning up, and then it's just like, Where's he gone? Well, and they're like, "Who? Who? who wh- what are you doing? Whose thing are you cleaning up? Who had this?" Yeah, no, they didn't. They didn't uh... No, no, I'm asking these questions. <laughs> Think about this, guys. <laughs> like, where, where did that bottle fall from? What the? F- <sighs> no, no. And then she does. She forces herself to remember his name, Okabe. Yep. And Which then, then resonates with the others as well. To a degree, yeah. Uh, oh, I don't think so at this point. They kind of just look confused and say, you're right. Because she bur- they, they, burst down they, in tears at that point. Not that they, you know, remember anything, but I feel like it. it it's recognisable to them. To a degree, yeah. And then, true to her words, she kind of like resides him to the past. To, yep. to be gone and wander, wanders around and to think about it. Um, and we, I suppose we haven't really talked about the. We talked about it before, but it's like around about this time they have the do to do thing where Mary is all do to do, that means it's lunchtime. Yeah. Uh, too good. And it's do, just, do, do. just her and Daru. And he's yeah. not getting called Daru. At that point, he's getting, getting like his proper name used. Hor- Horishima yeah. or something. 
It's because uh, his name is a uh, portmanteau. Portmanteau. Yeah, because it's like Da is from his the first name, and then uh, Ru is from the second part. Oh, bar. I just can't remember what. Yeah, I I can't remember what the names are, but like it's yeah. essentially just his a parts of his first and second names mashed together. Yeah, because it's like a barrel. If I remember right from the series. Uh, but essentially what we're going to get down to here is Caruso then realizes, nah, <laughs> this is this is not okay. Well, she has a conversation with uh, SZA. She, she appears again and goes, like, yeah. I'll just uh, check in with you just before I leave and go like, you know, you don't really get over this. You keep doing things oh. like inviting a time machine. And then going, nah, let's not bother. And yep. all this other weird shit, and you're not over him. You need to go and sort this out. Uh, so they do. So they do. Yeah. Is this? And then is there a point where basically it's the point where they're in the lab because uh, what's his name's been telling has tallied off his figures. And oh, and that's right. Uh, Moika and Mister Braun are tallying up the, and it's like, oh shit, yeah. Uh, uh, unless, unless uh, such and such a thing, we're going to be in the red yeah. this month. It's like, oh, I'm going to need to reconsider rent payments. Yeah, and I think there's a there's a bit where, uh, yeah, they find out that Daru and and Miyuri, it's like, oh, you know, the lab's not going to be here any longer because we, we can't. can't afford to keep it. Yeah. Uh. And that's a point. There's a a point in this bit where Diary phones Mayuri phones Diary and says, "Where are you?" Type thing. He says, "Oh, it's too hot outside, and plus there's a Rynet tournament here at the cafe. Yeah, that's right. You can come down here if you want." And she's like, "Nah, it's kind of weird because I don't I'm not I've got a shift." Um, and then she starts hearing Okabe's voice. Yeah. Like a ghost. She hears him hohin kyoma ing yeah. all over the place. Hohin <laughs> kyoma. Yeah, all over the place. Yeah. Okarin. Yeah, he's uh, just yelling. Yeah. Although it's just freaky. And then uh, Mo- Mo- Moika uh, appears at the door and um, basically goes, Yeah, he needs to come downstairs. Mr. Braun wants to talk to you. Uh, and then um, Chris has got summoned as well and says, Yep, not going to happen. Uh, we need to sort some shit out. And then yep. it, is it from this point, or is it a bit later? They kind of all co- reconvene, and they all go like, "Oh yeah." Uh, like my ear goes, "Oh, do you know? Have you ever? Do you recognize the term Ocarine? Do you know who that is?" And yeah, Carissa goes blink goes up. Nope, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and then Dara's had an interview and he's playing um, Ferris at Rynet. Rynet, yep. Uh, and Moika's up there being the s- score count. She's got her fingers up in there like <laughs> two, zero. Oh, well, that's three now. I did enjoy that, yeah. yeah. And then Ferris is like, man, you know the old, old, um, Leader of the lab was shit at the game, but at least he, he was a, a bit. He did more, it with conviction. He did it with conviction and a bit more game. You're 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 boring, Darius. Yeah, it's like, come on, stand up, Darius. Strike a pose with me. What? Like what? And he does some random thing, and then she says some. She says something with meow in it. In it. I can't remember what it is. Yeah, she does meow a lot though. Yeah, and she seems like the thing to meow, meow, meow tastic, <sighs> or some shit like that. Anyway, and then they all go, "Yeah, we do miss this guy." As and then holy, and then um, Chris who basically dons a lab coat and pretends to be. <laughs> Hurry, and then it like, just starts like shouting at people like, "All right, hack." You stop. You've got to do this. Go in, hack, sir. 
Um, oh, uh, what's her name? What, what's his name? Ryoko. Ryoko. Ruka. Ruka. Yeah, Ruka. Uh, you you got to like practice your uh, can uh, your swordsmanship. Your, your sword. Yep. Yeah. Which they had another scene where she's basically like, yeah, yeah, I'm, pra- I'm practicing and I'm almost there to unlock the super kamikaze ha level. And it's just like, oh, who told you that? I don't know. The person know. who gave me this container. I do, I do this a hundred times every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, basically, they all kind of basically start to remember that he's a thing. And Mary comes up to Chris at that point and goes, yo, you don't have to pretend. You're not as good as him. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and he's like, right, we're doing this You definitely shit. got the mannerisms down, though. Yeah. <laughs> we got this shit down. Uh, and then um, they meet up with uh, Suzha and they all wave goodbye as she goes back in time. To... Yep. They're going to pull some serious Gs. Oh, shit, no. Well, this is the second what? time they go back in time. The first time she goes back to 2005. Oh, yes. So, yeah, sorry, you're right. And then we do this whole thing. She goes back like, yeah. to 2005. And I presume what we're about to do is it, this is the scene where uh, Okabe was going to visit Mayuri at the graveyard. Yeah. And uh, she's going to try. The, the reason they're trying to go this far back is it's the same sort of principle as before of trying to maintain what happens while actually making an active change, even though it looks as though nothing has changed. So she's going to have a kind of a conversation. She's going to intercept him and have a, a, a chat with him. And mm-hmm. uh, she trips, trying to cross the road. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I can get in the way of this and just fucking get smashed by a car. Uh, yeah. And then she comes back into the future and goes, I killed him. I killed him. Yep. What the fuck? She, but this, the, the thing that kind of annoys me about this is like she's such a strong character whether I like her all the time or not and it's the same like with, with Okabe like yes things were, every time that happened it was harder and harder and harder but I, I it took him so long to break I think yeah you know like you you, you saw that gradual just disillusion setting in and and him just snapping as a person and for her it was once she's like oh my god what is this i you can't know? believe yeah, he, i mean can't believe he's gone uh, through that i mean maybe she's more empathic uh, may, maybe it's more the realization of what he went through than anything else maybe because right. that's what she's okay kind of like, how could he have done this so many times i could i can yeah and i think it's more an empathic thing Rather than maybe yeah. her, it was it was just her first time and he knew no one else has done it. Yeah, and she was really desperate to go through it. I think she possibly would break through it. Anyway, so yeah, so she's yeah. so that was the first time they went back in time, and, and then, then yeah, the next we come back, we everybody starts to kind of remember who Hokabe oh. was, and then she's like, ah, oh, fucking, let's do this again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna figure this out, um, and then she ends up sitting at a bus stop. With young Okabe, yeah, yeah. So she ends up um, sitting at a train tram line station because yeah, going by, and then she gives some weird history about her being a childhood as she's like only child, never really had any friends, a bit of a loner, strong headed, and maybe that's why my dad didn't like me type shit and yeah. all that, and then. Okabe sits down next to her and goes, you look kind of lost. And you know, I got a friend who... She's kind of lost too. She seems kind of lost too. Uh, And then she's like, shit, I got to think of something to spring into his mind. So she goes about Okabe... What's his name? Kojima. (laughs) Not Kojima. What's, what's his fucking um, stage name? Owen Kyoma? Owen Kyoma. How he's like weird mad scientist dude that saves the world but also is tragically lost and stuff like that. And Is is the change that she's making here then 
where he gets that idea. Yes. Yeah. Possibly. So by changing by changing that mm-hmm. where that information comes from, it's still going to be directed in the right way. Yeah. But it's changed the meaning behind that being given. Even though it still has a purpose. Possibly. Possibly. And then she gives him the big slap in the face. A, a sloppy kiss. She, which is weird. She kisses kisses a thirteen year old and it's just terrible. Yeah, what what's that about? She's what, eighteen? I, I, I don't know. I mean at this point she's nearly twenty. Nineteen? Twenty. I just Yeah, it's like This is all sorts of alarm bells ringing. That's like Yeah, that's 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 the sound of the police. <laughs> FBI. Party van. Oh my god. Four chan party van. That was van. definitely awkward. Definitely awkward. Four chan party van. Um <laughs> But of course then uh she lets him go mm-hmm. to continue and, and go and see Mayuri. Yep. Where he they'll uh, they'll interact like they did that day. Yeah. yeah. Um Oh totally missed uh, there's a point. There's a bit where she's um, Okabe and her, uh, Miyuri are holding each. She's hold. He's holding her in yeah. that way. Yeah, I can't remember why. It's because she starts talking about her dreams. Yeah, oh, yeah, I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been recently having these re- recurring dreams where I keep dying and you keep trying to save me, but you look so yep. painful, pain, and so much in pain because. I don't know why, type thing. It's kind of like the she's reiterating some of the things from the series there because she does mention that. Before, yeah, but I don't know. That's I, true. Don't think it was to him. Anyway, so yeah, uh, he goes and don't worry about it. They're just dreams. Doesn't mean anything, honest. And she goes, you know, the last time you hugged me like this was uh, at my grandma's grave. Uh, yeah, so anyway, they kind of come back to that at uh, this scene, uh, doing the 2005 thing. Um, yep. And Susan and her take it back, and then they go back yep. in time uh, into the future, and he's still there. He's there now. Yep. Uh, because he's somehow cemented. His thoughts? Yes, I think what he's done. She like it's almost like there's a there's a thing a kind of a fifty fifty thing here where part of the reason that the timeline works for her is that she was cemented to him. Yeah. Oh uh, and that's how they got there. Oh. They don't when they go back, she kind of speaks to him in an empty empty city in the middle of the street he's just sitting there in the middle of the street and she go and he goes what are you doing here and she goes it's not really what i'm it's not really how i got here it's why i'm in here or something yeah and uh she yeah. she explains that wherever he goes in time she'll be following him I think. she'll be yeah and then of course the the scene starts to populate itself more and more and more and he begins to talk to the organization again on his phone yeah <laughs> Like well, a massive douche, but I I think it's the, it's almost like. In, her becoming responsible for that part of his personality and becoming, res- in part responsible for his relationship with Mayuri in that way, mm-hmm. that has cemented his need and existence, in that timeline too. Yeah, and then. Um... I think was the last line of the movie is like, you stole something from me. You stole my first kiss from me. And I want that back. And she goes like, nope. And then, is that it? Is that the end of the movie? It's the end of the movie. I skipped through the whole credits to find no credit scene. So Yeah, I did the same because I was running late. And that's it. What did you think? What did you think, Colin? Uh... It's kind of nice, and looking at it, and, uh, <laughs> you also disagree. Um, I no, I I I think um, 
I think it makes perfect sense Uh to do something like that because it seems like I think ending the season uh, the way it did was too neat. Even you know, even though I think it's a good ending to the season, mm-hmm. I don't think it's a good ending to that story. Yeah, yeah. Um, they... I don't know if I would have done it via a movie, but maybe there's a budgetary thing there. Like, because I did notice, like, the animation was not that significantly better to that of the TV show. So, like, that wasn't wasn't like when we watched Cowboy Bebop, where the the movie has like a significantly increased animation budget, yeah, art budget. Um, I think like you essentially watched a long episode and for me i think that that would have been better played out in sort of additional episodes yeah yeah it's, it's certainly it's kind of nice to kind of get another take on the weirdness of uh, Riedensteiner in it oh totally and, and for the... me it's almost like it's it's the rela- <laughs> the way season one of Steins Gate relates to the movie is the same way that Toy Story one relates to Toy Story two. Yeah, it's just a well, it's a ro- it's the role reversal. Oh because yeah, because Toy yeah. Story one is all about Woody trying to save Buzz, mm-hmm. and Toy Story two is all about Buzz trying to save Woody. Yeah, it's sort of the role and, reversal. Like, yeah. And I like, and I think that's cool because ultimately, like I say, I think it's like it's a very neat package that season one ends on. But ultimately, like the reveal of Suzaha or the mysterious voice giving information to finding out it's Suzaha is maybe ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not long. Um... It's it it feels rushed. Like I feel that the beats that it hits make narrative sense and i think it's it's sort of quite sweet in a few areas as well but i just think that i don't think it's rushed being a i i I don't i mean unless it's like another season where it's that's that's what i'm saying yeah that's exactly what i'm saying is and and i and that's why i'm saying is it's maybe they couldn't have done that because they didn't have the the budget to do that yeah but at the same time i as a movie itself, I don't feel it was like rushed as such. It just figured that it had all it was built up all this like pretense already in it. Yeah. And it didn't need to go maybe build up the whole pretense like it did before. Um Well I I suppose like I say rushed and I don't mean like it was incomprehensible because it was just being sped through. I suppose what I mean is is that I think they hit some really big story beats mm-hmm. that are quite interesting, yeah. but they didn't spend any time explaining them, allowing it. Well, not even explaining or, them or allowing us to live in them. They just happen to further the story. Whereas, like in season one, you are such an active part of all of that stuff happening and that kind of evolving with that story so if it were to have been another season i feel like we could have really sort of sat through it in a way that was much more interesting yeah it could easily have got a bit more in it as you wouldn't have you know disappeared within the first half hour and then yeah uh carissa's fucking moping about for an hour saying all right i'll respect his wishes but actually no i won't and then last half hour is like let's do it guys let's get this shit yeah, on the road exactly and to me, like that's that's the three acts of a, a season, you know, like. But again, it doesn't even need to be another twenty four episodes. It could have even benefited from it being like, you know, three episodes, three episodes, three episodes, just to get that yeah. across. But uh, I, I, I'd give it a seven. Like, I don't think it's bad. I think it's a missed opportunity to have told. I think what I think is a pretty interesting addendum to an existing cool story. Yeah. Uh, and like I say, it's not it's not rushed. It just feels it feels a little shallow. And for yeah. something to have such poignancy, or it's trying to hint at poignancy and feel so shallow, it just feels wasted. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say about seven. It it didn't I, there's bits there and it's kinda of cool and they're 
I think they were trying to be maybe a bit smart with like some of the beats of going back, saying, oh, data view type thing. And then there's like obviously yeah. things that's mirrored it through. Like, example, the scene that you mentioned was like straight out, taken straight out of the, the series. And there's a few others, obviously, just not like ones that are being cut and paste. There's some new scenes in it from other world lines that seem to meld into them. Like he goes out biking with Suzha and Suzha is like, oh yes, don't you feel the thrill? And then Dara is there and everyone's there. And then Dara is like, oh God, it's so hot. This whole thing. And then Mayu is like, oh, maybe you can take up getting to the gym and getting fit, Dara. And then Chris is there going, oh, the time machine. The fuck? <laughs> Sitting there all depressed. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's... I think it is just that. I, I think that I would have liked to have lived a, 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 in it a bit more. Like, yeah. I've having watched. So they did a for for Attack on Titan. They did a a recap movie of the first three seasons. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've watched a bit through it, and it's just like, man, if I hadn't seen the first three seasons. <laughs> I'd be bummed out right now because it's like there's so much going on. I was like, oh, first five minutes. Uh, what's his name died? Uh, his parents died. Like, oh, cut, and, cut, and his cut, dad's cut, run cut, away. Cut. And then he blacks out. And then it I, turns out you can yeah. turn into a Titan. And then. It's just like, you know, the, this... it's like an extended previously on Attack on Titan. And I think, like, that's almost a little bit what this movie feels like is a, a, a kind of. A, a very big edit of an entire season, and uh, you know, I, I would believe if you told me, oh, it turns out actually they had planned another season, uh, and it was going to be so many episodes, but they didn't have the budget for it, and they really wanted to tell the story before they got to zero, which is another story. Yeah, uh, you know, to try and wrap up that that package that they'd created. Um, I would buy that they went, oh, it turns out we didn't have the budget or the time, but we needed to tell this story. Yeah. Uh, so we, we we did it in a movie. So what do you think? Um, see, the, the scenes that were pretty much identical. Uh, do you think they literally just cut them and pasted them out of like the series? I don't think they did, because I think there's... Su- or Well, maybe if they did to a degree, but I think there's subtle difference. Yeah. Maybe. Um, it very much in the same way the Endless Eight had those subtle changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I still, I still say to this day, Endless Eight is both the worst and best thing I think I've ever watched. Wow. Worst and best thing. Well, it's interesting. You got to, done. you have to admire it uh, the, because they had the, the attention to... to detail was astounding. Yeah. It seemed that way. It's, oh, it's yeah. just very boring. <laughs> well, you know, like eight episodes are practically the same. <sighs> God, all, they are the so, so the same. Only, only to find out all all that needs to happen is Keon to go, ah, you know what? Maybe we should do something else tomorrow. We need to study. That's what I'm going to say. We need to study. <laughs> you... <laughs> you, you stole it. Let's have a study session together. Like no, oh my god, not allowing that. Not not. I didn't tell you that you could have that. Not allowing that. No, I don't like that idea. Uh, well, we did it. We watched the movie. Yeah, it was okay. It was better than the OVA, or the OAV, whichever way it is round. It was is better it, than that. Do we rate it better? Do you, are you still writing yeah, down the scores? I think. I'm I'm keeping it in memory. It was a six we gave the the individual episode, so Alright. So Point what, higher. What was our average for the first season? Oh, uh, I don't know. Are you not writing the scores down anymore? No, I said I, I'm keeping them in mind, but I don't I like that I'm keeping them in mind when I can remember them. Uh so you're not writing them down then? No! I said no. <laughs> no. Keep them in mind. Not right. I used to write them nope. down, man. I used to write them down, when but that you... was time consuming. Why did you... what? Did you just No I didn't then no? I was like that's a six. And and also we never really we I, I haven't written them down for about four seasons now. Have you not? Nah. Oh, I'm disappointed now. 
Uh, I'll maybe go back and, and listen to the ends of the episodes. I... But I digress. Uh, we've we've finally reached the end of this episode, mm-hmm. and we will be returning next week. Um, but as as we always say, who's that anime is an anime podcast. Our home is at anchor.fm forward slash who's that anime. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can be found where all good podcasts can be found. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Overcast, Audible, and Stitcher now as well. And apparently on Amazon smart devices, which is quite interesting because of Audible, presumably. Wait, um, so that means that you can go, Alexa, play Who's That Anime? Yep, and it'll totally do it. So, Alexa, play Who's That Anime? Now just, just stick that up next to the, your uh, Alexa while you listen to this. Yep, and it'll be fine. It works. Um, it does. It will, it will. Cause I've seen it work with other stuff. I remember I've seen it with Xbox off. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the streamers is it Xbox off. <laughs> um, also, also, um, we did it with our, our one of our mates who's watching one of our streams, and he had like his, right. his iPhone was picking us up. Oh, that was so right. so much fun. Because we were shouting Siri, I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, Siri. But yeah, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we also have a Facebook page that's facebook.com forward slash who's that anime you can come there to find out when new episodes go live or just share in the anime memes we have a discord the URL for that will be in the show notes again with everything else in here Um, we have a YouTube channel youtube.com and if you search for the link who's that anime uh, Colin what's the latest episode we put up there your name (sighs) gonna maybe go back and give that a watch that was quite a good one to talk about I remember enjoying that movie a lot yeah so Go and watch it. I put it up and I made it different from what you gave us because it's not, it's in a frame. And mm, we didn't record it with a frame. Like we're recording this we episode in a frame. We are. And we are. It's all frame like. It's all frame like. <laughs> we, uh, Colin and I also like to play games online. Colin mm-hmm. at twitch.tv forward slash couchfuel mm-hmm. and me at twitch.tv forward slash hail mm-hmm. you can find archives of all of the stuff that we've done on there at the different youtube channels that would be if you look for at youtube.com for couch fuel you'll find the channel there and youtube.com if you look for hail payman yeah you will be able to find the channel there i'd also like to thank uh, taylor gray for writing our new theme music which is in the last episode so okay. very exciting uh, or the last couple of episodes, actually, I think, at this point. Oh, yeah. And for this episode now, too. On this episode. So, yeah. So, if you enjoy that, that would be awesome to let us know. Speaking of which, obviously, if you enjoy what we do uh, and want to leave a review, that would be fantastic. We don't make any money from this. If you like what we do, telling people uh, and getting them to join in the fun would also be cool. If you want to leave a review, five stars, always very much welcome. Less than five stars, absolutely welcome, too, particularly if they have constructive criticism. And that is us. We'll be back next week with Steins Gate Zero, episodes one and two. Oh, episode zero. Wait, what? I think it starts in episode zero. Holy shit. Which is potentially a precursor and talk about like the last episode of Steins Gate. Oh my god. Well, that'll be fun to find out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I caught some of it when I was trying to watch the movie because it was like, oh, you played this. I was like, oh, no. I'll go to this video. Nope, 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 nope. nope. I'll go to this video. And then I can go back from this video into the series rather than just try and search through Funimation to get the movie. And no. That, Daisy. that did not work. It would not let me go oh, well. and progress from from that into like the, the rest of the episodes linked to that. God damn. Oh, and also Funimation on the PlayStation was shit. Well, I use it on uh the on the iPad. It seems to be all right. So it's, I don't know what it is. It just didn't get the quality of the video up, and I shouldn't have any issues with the quality of the video. No, I think that's that is a Funimation issue. I think in general, because I sometimes have a little bit of that on the iPad. Yeah, um, and then anyway, it buffered. Yeah. Yeah. So right. That's it. We'll be back. Yeah. Same any time, same any place. Enjoy. Enjoy. See you later, folks. Bye.
Bye. Bye, folks. Bye.